Welcome back. Welcome back to the second from the last presentation for the Continuing Master's Student Class of 2021. And we have the immense joy to have the presentation of Lily Lick Finnegan entitled Creating a World Without Policing, Music's Role in Imagination, Experimentation, and Collectivity. We also are a very happy and joyous to have our BGJI alumni and faculty, Nadia Washington, with us uh, in the role of the advisor of Lily, as well as uh, the panelist, um, Terry Lynn Carrington, that cannot be with us, but that was also part of this process, so I want to make sure I mention her. And um, I would like to read a short bio uh, about Lily. Uh, Chicago-born drummer Lily Glick Finnegan strives to push boundaries and not adhere to labels. She's a band leader, composer, improviser, and side woman in a vari variety of styles. Lily has collaborated with musicians such as Chris Davy, Paul Gianti, Charlotte Cassidy, Tony Barba, Hannah John Tyler, and Paul Dietrich. For her, music is about imagination and envisioning the world she wants to live in. So Lily, we're very excited to hear your presentation. When you're ready, please, you can start. Hello, my name is Lily Gook Finnegan. Welcome to my final presentation for the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute. My project is entitled Music and Abolition, Creating a World Without Policing, Music's Role in Imagination, Experimentation, and Collectivity. What is abolition? The essence of abolition is a world without violent systems where people have everything they need, food, shelter, education, art, health, safety, etc., for themselves and community. These violent systems include police, prisons, and surveillance, systems that uphold white supremacy, capitalism, and patriarchy. This project specifically focuses on police. To understand the root of these systems, it is important to understand the difference between harm versus crime. Not everything that is harmful is considered criminal, and not everything that is criminal is harmful. For example, underpaying workers is legal, but it is a harmful practice. Marijuana use is still criminal in many states, yet it is not harmful to society. What would happen if we lived in a world where harm was really addressed? This is where the importance of transformative justice comes in. The prominent abolitionist Mariama Kawa states, transformative justice is about trying to figure out how we respond to violence and harm in a way that doesn't cause more, more violence and harm. This project has been influenced heavily by five books. These books are, We Do This Till We Free Us, by Maria Makaba, Carceral Capitalism by Jackie Wang, Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis, Freedom Dreams, The Black Radical Imagination by Robin D.G. Kelly, and The End of Policing by Alex S. Vitale. The system is rooted in hierarchy. The police are there to maintain it. According to Alex Vitale, the reality is that the police exist primarily as a system for managing and even producing inequality by suppressing social movements and tightly managing the behaviors of poor and non-white people, those on the losing end of economic and political arrangements. The myth of policing is that they are here to protect and serve everyone, but it is important to question who do they really serve and protect? The roots of policing are directly in slavery and colonialism. Police exists to control and keep these systems intact. My first piece is entitled Control.
Unfortunately, police reform isn't enough. In The End of Policing by Alex Vitale, research was gathered on the efficacy of police reform in decreasing harm. The research shows that even with increased training, diversification, community policing, enhanced accountability, and other reforms, there in general hasn't been change in police brutality and incarceration. The burden will continue to fall on primarily communities of color because that is how the system is designed to operate, not because of the biases or misunderstandings of officers. Police maintain systems of oppression. No amount of reform can change this when this is the base. Abolition is the only way. While it is important to identify the problems, it is just as vital, if more, to imagine and implement alternative possibilities. What do we want our world to look like? Some things that stand out to me is a society where everyone's needs are met, safety and health are prioritized, arts are embraced, and expression encouraged. Angela Davis wisely states, it has become so much a part of our lives that it requires a great feat of the imagination to envision life beyond prison. While she's specifically talking about prison, this, this directly ties into police as the maintainers of the prison system. How can we utilize our imagination to push past the status quo? This is why abolition is so tied to music. Music relies heavily on imagination and curiosity of alternative ways of being. Robin D.G. Kelly's book, Freedom Dreams, 
He states, Every freedom dream shares a common desire to find better ways of being together without hierarchy and exclusion, without violence and domination, but with love, compassion, care, and friendship. So how do we find these better ways? Through countless experimenting. We have to experiment ways of having unified and accountable communities. There is no one correct answer, and the only way to find out is to try. Music itself is experimentation. Through music, we can explore ideas of abolition. Chisel to see. Loud and to hear. For the time Resources are there for everyone to have an equitable life. Through defunding, there will be more money to distribute fairly. This means there will be resources for the arts. Ultimately, abolition helps music. But music helps the abolitionist cause as well. Music creates spaces for people to be free of systems that hold them down and fully express themselves. This is an act of abolition. Together, there is a symbiotic relationship. The collectivity demonstrated in musical settings has the potential to represent the non-hierarchical practices of abolition.
realities without police are possible. It is time for a jailbreak of the imagination in order to make the impossible possible. How can we create these spaces we value today while also still fight for better futures? My future plans consist of creating music spaces that feel safe and experimental, where music can push boundaries as well as beliefs, dreams, and ideas. This is a lot of what drew me into playing music in the first place. This past semester, I've organized a few shows with collective ideals in mind. In the next few years, I plan to put on more shows that incorporate abolitionist practice and welcome radical and transformative politics. Together, we can create these communities. Thank you for being here today. Um, I would like to thank all the activists, artists, revolutionaries, scholars, creatives, and dreamers who paved the way. Also like to thank all my advisors and mentors at the Global Jazz Institute, Institute of Jazz and Gender Justice and the Greater Berkeley College of Music. Danilo Perez, Nadia Washington, Terry Lynn Carrington, Mark and Marco Pignataro, Francisco Mela, Chris Davis, Linda Mahan O, and Asia Burrell Wood. Thank you to Daniel Babai and Ugly Duck Studios for recording and mixing the music. Also like to thank all my collaborators, Naomi Nakanishi, Paul Pandit, Mina Lemos, Aretha Tillotson, Devin Gates, Jonathan Risen, Mark Abramowski, Alex Schwartz, Arena Bagyakova, and Katie Webstar. And lastly, to my family. Thank you. And thank you, Lily. Thank you for this beautiful music. And I would like to immediately start the uh, second part of the presentation, and Nadia, I know you've been uh, working with with Lily in the last three semesters, so I'll give you the first space for comments or questions. All right, Lily, congratulations! Thank you. We have made it. We are here, <laughs> and uh, it's just lovely to see how your um, project has developed and come together. Uh, it's uh, I must say I learned a great deal. Um, about abolition, uh, because of course your music is rooted in the literature that you've been absorbing uh, for some time now. And so uh, it's really been, uh, I've learned a great deal. Um, the question that I have for you is how does collectivity in your music connect with abolition? Cool. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> You're um, yeah, so I just want to say, like, I guess this idea of collectivity and kind of the idea of abolition is to have like non hierarchical 
and more like horizontal running spaces instead of like top down approaches. And I think in my music settings, I try to make it like every one of the band's ideas are welcome. And the compositions are also pretty open. Like sometimes it'll just be a melody or different cells of ideas or graphic scores. So I can kind of incorporate with, with the group how it should go. And I also kind of think of like soloing, like everyone can have the opportunity to solo and like r r roles of, I mean, drums are usually in the background or bass or just comping or piano just comping. And I try to like switch up the roles. So maybe, you know, the bass is playing more melodically um, or something like that. And so I, and I like to just discuss with the bands, like how they would like it to go. And the idea is that like every time I play a composition is for it to go a lot differently. Um, depending on who I'm playing it with in the setting. So yeah, and I think that sort of um, incorporates this like collective mindset that I think abolition represents. Great, great. I have uh, one other question for you. What does F12 mean? <laughs> F12, well, it's it stands for a like, slang term that people use. Um, mm -hmm like F the police, F12, oh, okay. <laughs> F12, um, 12 is like the, the, the number for the police unit. So mm -hmm. it's just become like a slang term that people have used throughout like protesting. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. And do you have mm, any, uh, as far as the organization, the, the shows, the series of shows, uh, are there any other facets of the outreach um, you're going to include? Or can you share a little bit about uh, any other facets of the outreach component of your project? Yeah, I mean, I think I would just would like to keep on organizing shows that have like a more collective and community standards in mind. and. Um, to really make it like an open and safe space for everyone and where when, when issues of harm do come up like in music communities or just general communities like we can address it in a more like transformative justice way. Um, I think that a lot of like I was saying my background in music. Like from when I was in high school going to like DIY like do it yourself shows um, in Chicago and they're always very like radical spaces with like politics that welcomed everyone and. I think that having those spaces is like very crucial for people to first of all just like enjoy themselves because I think that like pleasure is like a uh, revolutionary thing in itself and I think that music can, can uh, contribute to that and I also think it's like a way for people to speak out like what they believe in and like be around other people who can support them and so I just think like fostering those spaces that it's like music but also like general arts and radical politics combined is like really key in like sustaining movements as well because people get burnt out easily. And I think that music helps carry things through. Lovely. And then one more thing, did you reach out to, or do you have some sort of a relationship with any of the authors that you mentioned? Before? Yeah, I've reached out to like Robin Kelly. Um, He's a one, he, he wrote the Thelonious Monk biography actually, and he does a lot of jazz writing as well. And I reached out to him and he actually, the quote I used was in his like updated introduction for his book, Freedom Dreams, that will come out like next year. It's the 20th anniversary of the book. So yeah, it was great to connect to him. And I hope to keep connecting to all the authors one day. So yeah. Lovely, it'd be great for them to hear, hear this music. That yeah, you, I'd love to you know, share with them. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Well, thank you again, Lily. Yeah, it, thank it, you so it's much. been, you know, a, a growing and learning experience for the both of us. And I'm really, really happy and proud for you. Oh. And uh, yeah. Thanks, Nadia. That means a lot. You're oh, so you're welcome. Too. Yeah. So I'll open it up if there are any other questions. Yeah, thank you, Nadia. And uh, Lily, you mentioned that uh, Maestro Francisco mm -hmm. Mela has been also uh, helping you a lot. So, Francisco, since you're here, please, please uh, use the space for any comment or or question to Lily. Thank you, Marcos. Uh, yeah, Lily. Um, again, uh, I, I I just want to share with you something that I hear I hear in your music mm -hmm. today. I remember back on the days that this was in two thousand four. At that time, uh, 
uh, the legendary drummer uh, Roy Hens was playing with with Danilo trios, and I, uh, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, that day when I was that night when I was playing in this club at Wallis, Roy, Roy Hens was there, and I told him that I have some of the music that he recorded with Danilo. I thought that he was he, he was gonna be happy, but he was very mad because it was a record that they were putting out. But uh, but uh, making the, the story short, he ended up in my house at three o'clock after Wallace because he won the tape where I record that uh, scholars show with Danilo. And I didn't say that to Danilo, but, but, but I had it. <laughs> but, but, but I, let's go to the point. Lily, one thing that really changed I mean, there are many things that changed my life and my journey as a musician. But one of the things uh, 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 that changed my life was what Roy Hens said to me after that show, uh, uh, that, that gig that I had uh, at, 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 at Wallis. He asked the owner of Wallis to, 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 go, to, to go to talk to him because he was at the bar, at the last part of the bar. And so Paul came to me and he said, hey, Roy Haynes is there. He wants you to go to see him now. And I said, Roy Haynes, oh my gosh. And so I was there and he said, yeah, man, can I share something with you? Sound is money. And that's what I heard today. Oh, wow, thank you. It's so beautiful the way you play, the way that the band, the full band play together and Congress, Lily, because you keeping, you coming from Chicago, we have one of the most amazing uh, 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 avant-garde uh, 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 scenes over there. They are ensemble of Chicago and all these people that, you, that you've been around listening since you've been growing up. And so, Liz, uh, 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 Lily, you're just doing what you are supposed to do. Uh, the sound, the, the composition, the story, the way that you compose the whole picture of this beautiful uh, uh, painting that you just uh, uh, present to us. It's amazing and I just want you to keep going because, listen, you got it. Ah, thank you, Mela. That means a lot. Appreciate everything I've learned from you this semester. I've grown a lot just from studying with you. And playing too. It's been great to play with you. One of the most memorable experiences. Well, it's been back back and forth because what I've been teaching you, you've been teaching me too. So it's been like, I'm so fortunate to to, to be in this in the room with you every time that you open it up and play uh, 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 this tradition. I was like, wow, this is what I'm looking for. A student with that capacity that hear other things and free their insert to. To not only tinkling, tinkling, you know the shinti ting, shinti ting, shinti ting. Instead of tinkling, shinti ting, shinti ting. I'm swinging anyways. Thank you, Lily. Thanks, Mila. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. Um, I see Chase is in the room. I wonder if Chase would like to share some words. Uh, Chase, no? Okay. Uh, Maestro Danilo. Oh my God! I'm I'm I got a load in. That's Lily. Oh my God! Let's go for real now. Oh yeah. my God! Let's go for real. Wow. Um. Okay. I got it. First of all, I want to I want to start by thanking you, because, uh, first of all, you're a generation of the uh, pandemic, and through the virtual, you know, the one of the most challenging experiences we encounter in our history. Um, I, I can speak uh, in behalf of um, the team, Marco and, and all the, the, the faculty. But I, I, I am so uh, excited because those concepts of zero gravity, the unknown, let it yourself go. You reminded me and, 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 and taught me I'm going to give you that, that credit. You taught me that as a mentor, we must be aware of ourselves as practitioners. 
of the of pra as practitioner and as human beings if we wish to teach students in a non-threatening, anti-discriminatory way. That was the reminding, you know, because with dealing with you, I got, you got me to be a human being. I got, you know, frustrated, emotional, like, oh my God, she's stopping me. She's taking me to the limit. Lily, <laughs> and, that's, and that's when, it, that's, it, you can only go through this to grow. If you think that you, you don't, and in order to, 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 to move forward, you, you have to acknowledge this. But I, but I must tell you what I'm, I'm really moved by is the ability you have to respond in the most chaotic moments. Even with the, within the chaos, you responded in, in a way that, 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 that speak for, for a human uh, eternity. In other words, if we base our relationship and in this way, anything could be possible. Thank you. Your music, I love it. The only thing I, the only thing I want to talk about is the mixing, but we don't have to do this here. Like we could do that outside. But the mixing, I, I have some comments about that. Okay, totally. Um, oh my God! And now, now the stuff that you bring into the table, Nadia, you and, and Nadia, Lily, you, you know. The education as a practice of freedom. Here we are. Totally. I want to encourage you when somebody asks you, like, where do you see the change? I want you to raise up your voice. I mean, this is me and said, I experienced that. I experienced that because the, the topic that you are bringing to the table, and that's why I said we're going to get serious on it, is that the role of police at the foundation in the United States was to protect white supremacy. That, so you bring bringing out a lot of issues that are very, 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 very strong. This could go on for the rest of your life, okay? The space of, that we're talking about, progressive, holistic education, and engaging pedagogy that we have at Global, um, the well-being of the people you're working being, that all of that is going to play a role in what you want to do. You know, um, I think that the concept that you are bringing, and I want, I just want to clarify. So, so sometimes people, the word abolition is is the is the, is the current um, uh, movement in order to really. I, I think it's like um, that. It's, it's really talking about the process that never took place. And now, now we're dealing with a systemic and a structural challenge. The, the, we, we have to realize that the word abolition is calling urgently for something that should have happened before in terms of change. But you're really talking about the redesign of American society. That's what you're tapping into, mm -hmm. you know? Not, so, not only economically, but also politically and socially in order to ensure the inclusion of, of, of previously um, um, enslaved black people into a new democratic system. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Totally. That was not envisioned. You see what I mean? That, yeah. play, that process never took place. And now we are stuck in here. Yeah. So... Music plays an important role, but also the interconnection of a lot of other things, you know, health issues, housing, jobs, art, the recreation, all of that. So, yeah. you know, I am on, on your call. Um, um, please stay in touch and let's continue. I love the idea of new reality. Um, it's really fascinating to, to have seen so much growth musically, and, 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 and critical consciousness, as, as Paulo Freire talked about, cri critical conscious, the consciousness of criticism, you know, it, yeah. you have, you have, you know, and remember tolerance, patience, remember, understand your privilege, <laughs> that you can speak in a certain way that other people can, <laughs> mm. and we can go deep into, but, but really pursue that path, that beautiful path that you're talking about of change. Wow. 
Thank you, Daniela. Yeah, blessings. Nice, nice working with you. That means so much. I, I just appreciate you and the space that you've like given all of us in global to like pursue these ideas. And I think you were one of the first people that kind of are t- talking about these new realities. Like you were saying at the beginning of their program, like, all right, guys, like, what do you want to see different mm-hmm. after the pandemic? And like, what, like, we're, we're not going back to how it was. And like, what are these new realities? And I don't know, you're like one of the main people that has like connected those ideas for me. So I'd like to thank you. I've learned so much from you. And 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 remember, security is not possible without the physical, mental, and spiritual health of our community. Exactly. That's why we have to jump in it. We have to we have to work on that. Yeah, okay. exactly. All right. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right. Congratulations, Congratulations. Lily. And uh Thank you, Nadia, so much. Hold on, man. Sorry. To Dr. Nadia, good beat kudos. Thank you, Nadia, so much. Nadia. All right, so I will we'll wait for 10 minutes for the next presentation. Let's congratulate, congratulate again, Lily and, and Maestro Francisco Melas. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everything, guys. Thanks for coming out. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Danilo and Marcos again. How can I get that teacher? The 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 global jacket, Danilo. I'm putting you on the spot, please. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we Marco. We gotta make one for everybody. I, I will, please. You have to be a voice of what we do here. This is like, um, you know, it, it's 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 a beautiful space for for. You know, like this. What for this? <laughs> we come together and Lily. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Marco, we're gonna, we're gonna. I'm gonna, you know, pass the ball around to Marco. He's the one dealing with the budget and all of that. We got. I have get... some T-shirts. We can send them out to the. Oh place. yes, yes, please. please. Yeah, yeah Mela, we get you a hat or what something. Size? Like, please wear it. I w- I wanted to. I wanted to. Yeah, that'd be because great. because because just by doing this. It, it makes me feel part of this. Come on, man. What I, I size mean, are you? Mary, I'm just, I'm in heaven, man. Like, or like just like just to watch this, like all the interactions, all the diversity, all the, the, the mental process that we're going through, all like a family, we're working it out. It's, it's just, totally. it, it's, um, it blew me away. Right, Lily? It's yeah, like, definitely. We work through yeah. a lot together. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, you gotta stop and start crying. Man. <laughs> yeah, Nadia, right? Yeah. So, so Lily, don't ever ask me again where the change is, because you are the change. Ah, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you? Yeah. Uh, everyone here. And playing, right? Mela, she's dealing with it, like <laughs> she's like bam, bam, the music is happening. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, but been... but 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 just realize, I think we. I mean, if we want to continue this path, that's this is a very very difficult. It's a very um, challenging topic you just brought to the table in terms of how we interact. It's a very profound. And I think opening spaces like that, you know, Esperanza opened a space in uh, Oregon like that too. That's what we've been doing in Panama. That we're hoping to do that here now. Wow. But open it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I th- I think that's that's the key. It's just it it's just because it interconnects with the way that the country capitalism and all of that. That's what is so challenging because you you're tapping into people that basically have, this is all have the same connection. You know, totally. It's, you know, so we have to come up with a new. You know, it started with the defund the police, remember? And now people are saying, "Hell with that! That's not happening. Let's go abolitionist now." And and it's yeah. just a, it's just a push. It's a process. You know, it's like people call for that because that's the way. You know, it's it, because you you are using the right words. You it, they hurt, but that's what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm, totally. And and you know what I love? You reading the books and reading people and reading black literature. That's yeah. what you got to study. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I've learned so much from all these authors. Like, it's nothing like a really original at all of what I'm saying. It's like people have been saying this for a long time. And 
it's just like there's so many books and amazing scholars out there that I've learned from. So including yeah, you. Yeah, yeah and Ro Roman Kill is happening. Yeah, read, he is. read a book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paolo oh, yeah. Freire. Okay, I will. I've, yeah. And uh, that will give you a lot of other things to go about it. But, you know, what we encounter now is really in order to move forward with the with this idea, you are linking the black history of the music, but the the history of the music of, of blackness didn't start in 1600 like they have it in Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. it started it started in, in, in the early 15. Yeah. You know? So all of those are going to link. And then you're going to find out, oh, system of capitalism connected. Well, that's what you're doing anyway. Yeah, exactly. No, and I'm excited to keep learning from you, Danilo. And yeah, all the I mean, that you're doing. yeah, let's, I mean, let's do it. Work together. Yeah, fight together in uh, Chicago. Yes, yeah. Chicago is a great place. Uh, very liberal thinking. And, yeah, and I'm a excited lot of, to be there. Yeah, it's great history of, of uh, Black history there in the University of Chicago. You can Definitely. go and check it out.